get to your upbringing. Born in Cincinnati, okay. Ohio, raised in Dayton, Ohio. Hmm. What was Cat Williams' upbringing like? Your parents were Jehovah Witness. You were a, a prodigy. You were brilliant. You talked to me that you got accepted to college at seven years of age. You could read fluently at three years of age. So having that kind of knowledge, having that kind of uh, of, 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 of prodigy, or so what was so? I mean, was it? What was your upbringing? How how was it? How was life as Cat Williams crunk coming up? Um, I I. I was often confused because I knew things and I wasn't sure how I knew them. Um, I knew things that I f felt like I don't have a reason that I, I know this, but I, I loved to read. Um, I was voracious because they told me when I was young that knowledge was powerful, uh, that knowledge was power and I, and I had studied powerful people and I, I, um, I really believed that I, I, I immediately my next project was to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read the whole encyclopedia set, you think you're one of the smartest people in the world, right. only to get out in the world and find out you don't know anything, you know? So it, um, it, was, a, it was a confusing time, but yeah, I had a childhood. I was, I was grown, but I, I, at five years old, I was in front of five, 10,000 people given a performance with a full suit and tie on, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it hasn't, it had, it, it, it came full circle um, for my life. I knew that the applause and um, the giving of information and laughs and truth to people somehow benefited them and also benefited you and, um, <clears throat> yeah, so when they would ask me what I wanted to be, everything that I would say that I wanted to be was something that didn't exist. And they would never give me credit for it because I needed to say um, a doctor or a lawyer. lawyer, but that's not what I wanted to be. So your parents weren't as supportive as you would have hoped because you were wanting to be things when you got older that they had no knowledge of or it didn't exist at the time. No, it, it wasn't that. It, it was... Um, I'm saying I'm <clears throat> I'm almost a hundred years old right now, but if we go outside right now, I can run a four three forty or or a sub. I can do a four one six if I'm Oh, there's short. Jimmy John's across the street. We can order a sub. <laughs> but um Oh, you've been on the submarine. That what you sub? So um so back then it was even greater. So you got this guy that all the coaches want to play. Man, Cap, I don't do that. Hold on, because I'm I'm five foot five in the fifth grade. I've been this size my whole <laughs> life. Like there was a portion of school where I was one of the big dudes. Like it, just, as soon as everybody caught their growth spurt, I was out of there. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm saying I was a competitive individual. Mm -hmm. My father was an athlete. I can see like, that. Like, like, no, I've been 145 pounds my whole career. That's why I never bothered when they said, you cats on drugs. I knew, how you gonna prove that? I'm <laughs> my body is a temple. I've been, I've been the same size since I was 10. <laughs> like, what do you, yeah, like, I, I, ha I, haven't ch I haven't changed off this pivot foot. This has always been who I was before stand up or anything. But it was, a, um, it was an interesting childhood. I, I, I appreciate my parents, even though um, I couldn't live within the religious frameworks of right. what they had set up. Um, but that was more not wanting to live a double life and not want to embarrass my family. You know what I mean? Because I read where a form of punishment for you is that they would take books because you mentioned you were such a voracious reader. And a form of punishment was when they would they take the books for them because you could read fluently. You, you, you told me how at like three or four years old, you could read, 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 not, not just a, a little child's book, but you could read, read. Well, I'm saying when we when we go to Haiti to do missionary work, understand that my mother and my father, nobody that's there with us speaks French. And, I mean, it speaks Creole and reads French. So I'm in charge of everything from the housing to the cars to the the gardener. Like I. I'm saying so. I'm not just reading. I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm. Probably, How old are you? I'm that? probably reading three thousand books a year, from the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm twelve. 
No, no, no fiction books at all. I'm only reading nonfiction. You could drive at 12. You received a full scholarship to the National Science Academy in Dayton, Ohio, but you failed. So you couldn't become so you would become ineligible. Why didn't you want to take that opportunity? I didn't see it as an opportunity. When I got in there, all the students were wearing lab coats and it seemed very confined and restricted and nobody seemed like they were having fun. It just seemed like everybody was smart. I, I didn't want that. That, was, that wasn't what I was signing up for at all. And plus, um, I thought that I was, I, Jesus was my big homie. So you know how you get a story about a dude joined the gang and you get a big homie, mm -hmm. right? Like at this particular point in my life, I'm, my thought is that the Bible is the greatest book that's ever been written, okay. that it houses the truth, and that it gives you this story of Jesus, and that I'm supposed to be like him. Okay. So I, it's already in my head that as soon as I get 13, I'm leaving. You, 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 at 13, you not only leave like, okay, mom, I'm moving out. You move from Ohio to Florida on your own. You weren't afraid. I mean, you like, did you? No, hold did, on. Hold did you on. not don't, have? A, what, so what were you going? So what were you going to do when you got to Florida? Don't say I wasn't afraid. There's no such thing as a human being of not being afraid. Okay. There are certain human beings that understand that being afraid in no way stops you from doing what you got to do. Okay. So um, I w I was afraid, um, but. I couldn't be that afraid because I knew what had happened with Jesus. I knew how it worked out. I, I, I knew that I wasn't in the wrong with how I was feeling, and I knew that I, I didn't have any bad intentions in it. Right. So I trusted God that it would work out. Why Florida? Um, because I, if you're raised in Ohio, the one thing on your list is, I'm going to get away from snow, <laughs> and I'm going to get as far... I want to uh, tell me the place. I literally went to a truck stop and I asked all the truck drivers where they was going. And it was one guy going to California and it was one guy going to Florida. And they told me how long it was going to take. And so that's why I ended up in Miami. Because. How did you get there? You caught a bus? Or no, I just told you. I was at the truck stop. I, so he you let hitchhike? Me, I got in. I didn't hitchhike. I got in the back of the dude's 18 wheeler, me and my Rottweiler puppy and my suitcase. <laughs> yeah, because I was, I probably had twenty five hundred dollars on me. Like I, like I was shoveling snow and cutting grass. Like I always had pockets full of money. When did you make the decision that you were gonna leave Ohio and go somewhere? And it ended up being Florida. So, but when did you know that you were leaving Dayton, Ohio, going to Florida? In my father and I's last interaction. Um, Somebody could have not made it. And we both understood that was all bad. What was the disagreement about? Um, if, if you t say that my family is very religious, let just say I'm not. So anything that I, I'm going to do is not is going to fall out of the guidelines. Right. But I'm not going to let you tell me what I'm going to be, even Especially if what you're saying is wrong. I can't condone wrong. And if I find out that something is wrong and I tell you it's wrong and you don't back me, that's so, what it is. Even as a young child, you were willing to tell your parents that some of the things that you're saying doesn't coincide with what I've been reading in, in, in the Bible. No, no. Very simply, don't. Don't try to disfellowship me for sexual acts and I'm a virgin. Sorry, God, don't make mistakes. You don't get two times to fuck me over. What do you mean you went to God and he told you I was guilty? <laughs> you just lied on God. So long. That's it. There's no conversation. Deuces. That's so that, what it was. That's when you made the decision. After yes. that conversation right there, you say, no, nah, I, can't, I can't live under this roof. It wasn't a conversation. It was an altercation. In the altercation, I love my father. My father loved me. But we are two men at it. That it'll never be the same again. You can't sleep comfortably around me. And I can't sleep comfortably around you. How similar are you to your father? No, um, I don't I don't know. He's a great man. I'm, I'm saying uh, my, it seems my, like y'all butt, butt heads. 
Right. But I'm saying that generally happens with a father son dynamic. It was just that um, religious relationships are always difficult right. in families. And they always are. Before it got to the point, because the dynamic, he's father, your son, before that dynamic and you step up on his level and you challenge him, you felt it was best for you to leave. No, no, no. I'm not being challenged. I'm being beat to death. Oh, he was abusive. I didn't say that. I said we were in an altercation. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. I saw what you did there. I saw what you did there, cat. Yeah. I saw what you did. You was in an altercation. You didn't say you lost. You said you was in an altercation. I in no way gave you the impression that I won anything. I'm the one leaving. I'm out of bounds. This his house. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so you, as long as I'm going to be under his roof, you there are certain quality. things that I'm going to have to do. Right. And the only way that's going to change is either this or that. Right. And I, I, I'm i saying I had two younger brothers. Like, I'm not I'm not an unreasonable person. Like, I don't have any mental issues whatsoever, despite what they lead people to believe. You know, I make good, pretty good decisions. Were you not... Uh so how was their relationship with your father? Were you not afraid to leave them? Well, I asked because it it went all the way to the actual department. So it was actually going to be something. Um, and when I asked them if they could just make sure that my brothers didn't get separated and what have you, um, they said they couldn't make those type of guarantees that they weren't really sure what would happen if this went down. And so part of leaving was the hope that it would be OK for them because not, none of them experienced what I experienced. I'm saying I'm the oldest. It's a lot riding on me. Right. I'm supposed to at least religiously hold down the family's name Correct. at this household. Right. You know what I mean? How much older are you than the baby and the knee baby? Like a lot older, like I, if I'm I 12, think, I 13. Think, yeah, they're five. And. In Pampers. Wow. You go to Florida, you tell the story. I've heard you, t you were homeless and right. somebody else told the story, said they were homeless. And you said they they mm -hmm. hijacked your story. Now, I don't Hey, I don't. At 13, I shouldn't have to tell you I'm homeless. I'm in a, I'm, I'm in Miami, Florida. I have no family members in Florida. I couldn't buy a house if I wanted to. I couldn't get an apartment if I wanted Correct. to. I don't have a credit history. Like, this is not a stretch for me to say that I'm homeless. I'm, I'm living in a park in Coconut Grove. The park still exists to this day. Mm -hmm. For eight hours a day, I would get up and go to the library and study for eight hours a day to increase my education. And then I would leave out of there and go to the marina and steal car radios and make $2,000 almost daily. Like I had a routine. This so you really could have played that San old thief in Santa Claus. You could have played it. <laughs> no, the Santa Claus wasn't a thief. The, Santa, yeah, he was. He the Santa Claus, you can't tell me. I read the script. Ricky <laughs> Smiley told you he didn't read the script. The, the Santa Claus was a crackhead. He just had that outfit on. That's what I couldn't have played. Okay. Like I couldn't have played a black guy that got raped in the bathroom. Right. So at any point in time, you're like, man, I made a mistake, man. I should have stayed my butt in Ohio, man, because this is, man, this ain't what I signed up for. I didn't experience anything once I left home that I hadn't signed up for. If anything, it saved my life. Me being homeless for that small period of time allowed me to see all of the people that were in that situation and to see that these were lawyers and doctors and, 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 and teachers and that these people were white and black and Asian and Indian. And the only thing that all of these homeless people had in, in, in common was um, 
they made a bad decision and aligned themselves with drugs. And I interviewed them all. What drug? What? And guess what, Shannon? Well, nobody had a great story. Nobody had a great story of what meth had done for them, what crack had done for them, what cocaine had done for them, what heroin had done for them, what speed had done for them. Nobody had them stories. Everybody's story was I had my life together. And then I decided to do this dumb thing. And I lost my wife, I lost my house, I lost my cars, I lost my reputation, and now I'm now out here sucking penis in the woods. What? Talk about scared straight. You ain't got to worry about me. If it ain't weed or nicotine, you won't see me touching it. I don't want no parts. I done seen what these things can do to people. Anything that take over your free will is the devil itself. Have you ever thought about what your life would have been had you stayed in Dayton, Ohio? No, that, that's like asking somebody that's in the NBA for 14 years, like, what would have happened if you didn't come to the NBA? Oh, I shudder to think. I, I, I thought it was what I was made for. I thought it was what I was built for. Anybody that knows me will tell you that when they first met Cat Williams, when I was Cat in the Hat, and they tell these stories about how he changed his name. Look, the truth of the matter is Disney sued me. Yeah, I was Cat in the Hat. They sent me a cease and desist letter and I'm not even making twenty five thousand dollars a year. And the mega company Disney has sent me a cease and desist telling me I can't use any variations of that name. Fine. I'm Cat Williams. That's all that happens. I have been this same product the entire time. They will tell you when they first saw me doing stand up, I was just like this. This is what I bring. This is my style. I read that you was raised in, in, in Florida. You had some some help, some ladies of the night. No, no, no. That's not true. No, that whole story doesn't take place in Florida. That story takes place in Oklahoma City. OK. So after I'm in Florida, I then join. Um, I try to join the Marine Corps and they won't accept me because I'm, Bro, too, I'm, too, I'm, I'm too young. And I've lied and told them I'm 16 and my family's moving down. and I don't have my ID, but it's coming. And so they let me go to the boot camp. Da, da, da. That's not going to work now. OK, so I've learned that lesson. Bro. So then I get this job selling stuff door to door. Um, across the country. And so I've been to all 50 states. Again, I'm 13, 14 years old. Um, so I did that. At, while I'm doing that, one of the places I'm at, I'm in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And I've decided I'm going to stay here because of meeting these ladies that you're talking about mm -hmm. and that situation. I don't know at the time why that's important in my life or why it's something I should be doing or any of that. But now later on, it certainly helps me in formulating Money Mike for Friday After Next. Right. And a pimp named Slickback uh, for the Boondocks. In San Francisco, you joined the nation. I was ever in San Francisco. I was in Oakland. You was in Oakland. Did you join the nation? Is that... Yeah, Minister, Honorable Minister Farrakhan and I have um, an extremely close relationship. He, he refers to me um, as one of his sons. So, um, yeah, I, I spent a particular period of time. Let me explain. Yes. Because my particular background was already religious mm -hmm. and super strict, right? I didn't find out about other religions by reading about them. I went to their religion. I, I, I don't want to learn from Jewish people from outside. I want to be in a synagogue. I, wanna, I, I don't want to learn about Muslim people from out. I, I want to be in a mosque. I, I, I don't want to hear about the Baptist or the Pentecostal. I want to go to their church okay. and see. And so that was the religious discovery that I was on through that period in my life. 